What is going on everybody? Welcome back to another little video here, Clyde Chick Outdoors. Middle of February can be one of the toughest months to fish, period. Whether you're in uh, Canada, the States, it doesn't matter. You hit this polar vortex and it gets to be a little bit of a freeze. It's cold weather, gets super tough fishing. But something that's fun to do in the middle of the month and also has a purpose for later in the month or later in the year yet, the season in March and into April for us Canadians, is fishing for Cisco's, AKA tulipies. And I did a video on this last year. I'm gonna go a little bit more in depth today is something that I'm kind of looking for here. And as you can see on my hummingbird here, I'm on this little drop off here. I've got 39 feet, I've got 24 feet up in here. You can see these two little numbers right there. And if you zoom in, you can see the contour is a really, really steep drop here. So this is gonna be a highway or travel zone for the Cisco's. So I don't even have to drill a hole yet. And because of my auto charting that I've done in the, the summertime and the fall time, I can walk over here, I can pick my spot, I can set up the shack and I can drill inside the shack. Now I'll probably be within a couple feet, right? Depending on where the water level is. But that highway, no matter what the water level is, is gonna obviously be the same, right? I'm gonna be right on that drop off. So let's get the otter popped up and see if we can put some Cisco's on the ice. just started following my jig instantly come on look at that instantly as soon as I got down there come on got him like that was instant as soon as I got to him little tungsten jig with the uh, tip of the mealworm of course but that spoon he had lots opportunity to look at it I really like this rod this is the first time using this rod I'll talk a little bit more about it later in the video yet but that is what I'm asked after right here. Perfect bait size Cisco for pike and for Lakers, but especially this size for pike right here. This is like a nice, like a nine, 10 inch Cisco. That's what I want for tip up bait. So like I was talking about, when I was doing my setup that right now the fishing's a little bit slower in February, but you can prepare for March yet. Fish for some Cisco's. Plus they're a pile of fun to catch. You can get into a school of them and just slam them like crazy. He's burping right now a little bit. But yeah, they're great for kids too. You get them out here, you can just catch a bunch of fish. It gets kids into fishing. So I definitely recommend it. Cisco, Cisco Disco. Oh, that fish just shot up at me. Ho, ho, ho. Straight up. He's going to hit it again. Look at him. He's charging it. Come on. He's going to shoot up again. Right up off the bottom. Got him. Got him, got him, got him. That fish shot straight up at it. I really, really like this rod. Wow. So I'm using a tuned up custom rod here, like I use pretty much for the whole year. But this is when I just picked up a fusion rod and it's a little bit slower action. I feel like as soon as I hook into a fish, I've got it pinned. Pinned and it's not getting away. There we go, Cisco. That was awesome, that fish just shot right up at it. Little tiny jig hooked right in the top of the mouth. There we go, number two. That's funny, I was using the spoon, using the spoon, it wouldn't touch it. it went to the tungsten jig, like instant. Instant, and that mark shot right up off the bottom. Tungsten is definitely the answer when you start to get really, really small, just because it's so dense. So if you wanna use something that's this small, you can use double the weight when you start to use tungsten. To get a, a lead jig this small, it'd have no weight at all. It would take forever to get down there. I love just, I love how much more dense those tungsten jigs are. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Fish chase me from the bottom. Come back. Here he comes. Here he comes. Come on. Come on. Come back. Here he comes. Lining up again. Got him. Got him. Light, light bite. Like they're very, very, very light bite. That's where that, that quick tip would come in handy. Be able to sense, sense that bite and feel it. And also watch your rod tip. But this, if you just kind of start to move your rod tip up a little bit. You, oh, come on. Get up that hole. Here we go. There we go. There we go. I was saying that with this, if you just start to raise your tip slowly, you can, it's a light enough rod that you can feel the extra weight on there. Perfecto. Oh, 
Ooh, look at that one. 30 feet. This one's getting, this one's getting hungry. Come on. Oh, come on. Don't charge it that fast and not eat. Let's go. Let's go. Here we go. Oh, he might have just kind of bumped it slightly. Again, he likes that fast pop. That fall. There he is. He's falling again. Here he comes. He's going to nail it. He's going to turn on nail it right now. No, he took a charge out. it. There he is. There he is. That was so predictable when they just start chasing it, chasing it. And finally, boom. You can just tell that they like get below it. And they line themselves up and look straight up at it. And they just come chasing straight up. That is a beautiful size pike bait right there. Like that is money. That's why these smaller, smaller jigs are nicer for the smaller Cisco's. Last year I was using a big rattle bait and I was catching quite a bit bigger Cisco's, which work too, but this is like the perfect tip up size for, for big jumbo pike later this year. Yeah, it's probably about eight inches. Woo, gorgeous. So if nobody's ever used the flasher before, I'll kind of give you a little rundown of kind of what you're looking at here. I had somebody ask me about that one time, like what does that, that round dial even mean? So you can see here, it says I'm in 36.3 feet of water, which is good for Cisco's. Don't fish for it for walleye or for perch or something like that because you will kill them. If you are catching some walleye and perch, move shallower or just basically don't even fish the bottom five feet of the water column, period. And then, so what you have here, like I said, it's 36.3 feet. And then you have here the solid red line here. That's the bottom. This little mark that's moving up and down right here, that's my jig right now. So now if you see, if I take and I drop it all the way to the bottom, it'll kind of blend in with the bottom and disappear. Up here, this is some kind of fish actually. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come up above it here and hopefully get its attention. And they're obviously not always gonna, you know, move towards you, but because I know that that fish is there, I can get above him where he can see. If I'm below him, the fish isn't gonna be able to see me at all. So here, let's see if we can get him go moving at all. So now I went up to him slowly and then I kind of bounced it around above his head slow, nothing. So now I'm gonna give it some big big thumps here to see if I can gain his interest. But right now it looked like I just kind of pushed him back down. I scared him away if anything, but you kind of try different techniques as you're, you know, as you start, usually start slower to start with. If you come up to a mark like that, if you're not marking anything on the screen, make some big aggressive uh, movements with your lure. And then when stuff, when something comes in, keep continuing to make the same move until he doesn't really show that he's going to bite. Then you can kind of change it up after that. But a big mistake a lot of people make is they're making a big aggressive movement and all of a sudden the mark comes in and they stop right away and go really, really slow. Well, that fish is kind of thinking, why did that just change you know, what it was doing? You know, what's going on? There's a reason why that fish was drawn over there. So keep doing whatever you were doing at first. And then if it doesn't bite, then you can try to change up the technique after that. Because like when you're marking four or five marks on the screen, bounce around from like mark to mark and see which one is kind of going to go with the, with the jig. You know, if, if you find one that is kind of, you know, following it around and show some interest, work that fish for a little bit more, but don't spend a lot of time. You know, if you have a bunch of marks on the screen at one certain mark, if it's not doing anything, jump around a little bit from mark to mark, especially they can be out, they can be spread out in this whole water column. I've had them all the way from 17 feet all the way down right to the bottom. So they can be anywhere. Do something to try to trigger a bite here. Come on. Oh, that one's interested. He like, oh, he liked that. He liked that. He liked that. He liked that a lot. I kind of gave it a couple big snaps and he hit it as soon as it started to fall. He really liked that one. Oh, come here. Come here. There we go. Nice. Nice size one. Perfecto. Yes. Mmm. That is like money. Can you say pike in March? So I'm, I know I've I know I've talked about it a few times already. These are the jigs that I'm using: Frostbite, Tungsten. Obviously, the Tungsten is the key there. These are a five millimeter jig, and these are a seven millimeter jig. These are the two colors that I use. This one's called Mint, and I don't know the color of that one for sure. But that Tungsten is definitely the key to everything. Tungsten versus lead. Tungsten's a lot heavier in terms of like for the, the same quantity. Obviously tungsten's not heavier than lead because if you got an ounce of lead and an ounce of tungsten, they weigh the same. But in terms of like capacity, I don't know the proper word for that. But your jig's gonna be a lot smaller, more dense, falls quickly. So when you get a jig like this that's super, super light, it's gonna small, small, it's gonna fall really quick compared to a lead jig 
that's going to be, if you went for the same size, it's going to be double, it's almost, so it's going to be half of the weight. So it's not going to fall as nice. And that last fish that I caught was like, literally I was popping it up and down, it was falling quickly and that's what triggered the strike. And then, like I said earlier too, as I'm using a tuned up custom rod here. This is a new rod for me today. It's the first time I ever use this. It's the Fusion 36 inch, six inch cork handle. And I've got that paired with a five pound Power Pro ice line and then a four pound leader. So very, very light. What I like about this rod though, as I explained a little bit before, nice, really slow action. So I got this rod in terms of for stock trout, but thought maybe it'd also be good for Cisco's because they have a really soft mouth. You don't want to pull those hooks from them. When they start to bob a little bit and got a great nice head shakes there, it's got nice, uh, a nice action in it basically. And it absorbs those head shakes quite nice. But again, super, super sensitive when it gets to be this small. I was really scared that when I was using this tiny, tiny of a jig that I wasn't gonna have the proper rod for it. But this, I was super impressed with the, how quickly the jig falls. And obviously that's because I got four pound test and five pound floral or five pound braid. I'm sure a lot of people even use two pound line, but I've just chosen this because this is what I'm accustomed to. And obviously I have a chance of catching some walleye throughout the day as well. And I don't wanna be using too light of line. But yeah, that, that's the setup that I'm using today. Nothing super crazy. I still got some marks on the screen, so I'm gonna keep fishing. But I'll give you a little bit of a rundown here too. I went super simple today. I don't have any heater with me. I don't have any uh, exterior lights with me because the sun was gonna be shining pretty good. So I'll probably wrap this up in the next 10, 15 minutes. But I've got one GoPro up here. I've got the main camera that I use all the time. And I've got my nice little setup here with uh, GoPro pointed down to the hole. I've got an aqua view trying to capture some of the fish coming up. And then the hummingbird cam that's all set up there. I just got a new Dakota lithium power pack there that's used for powering everything, right? It's like you can, when you film, <laughs> your, one of your biggest things is keeping everything going all the time. Charge, batteries, you can never have too many batteries and that power pack is definitely gonna help me a lot for the rest of the season. Okay, that's gonna wrap up my little on ice portion here. I'm still gonna do something at home real quick and show you uh, what I do with all the Cisco to prepare them for bait for the future. Thankfully, I had Carter with me today here in the shelter just beside me. Uh, a little bit shallower he caught probably double the cisco as i did so i got a little bit of work ahead of me tonight and he also caught a couple nice walleyes that we can uh, cook up some fish tacos for supper or for lunch tomorrow so yeah keep watching we're gonna wrap up the video at home right now that was a pretty weak snap back at home super simple right here i have a food saver here which you can get at like home hardware canadian tire walmart superstore you know a bunch of different places but it's simple all i'm doing here is first i'm going to seal the one side in here i have a, i have a roll in there right now red dot as soon as it's done sealing there it'll turn off and then i have already marked out here from previous times i know from here to here is 22 inches so that'll be kind of where my bag's gonna be pull it out simple cut done so i'll sort my bags into a couple different sizes i have some smaller ones that are great great for tip ups here and i have some bigger ones that i'll use for chunk bait and i'll also kind of switch it and mix and max a little bit i'll put four in a bag some will put three some will put two just so you always have kind of what you need if i'm going to go fishing with some buddies i'll grab the one with the four if i'm going to go out by myself i'll probably just grab the one with two or for th with three something like that if you keep them separated it helps a lot plus also if you uh if you do it when they're fresh I find they vacuum seal a little bit nicer compared to when they're frozen and then you do it in there. Right now, all the fins will kind of slide nicely against their body where if they're frozen and their fins are sticking out, you're gonna have a, a different kind of a seal going on and it can puncture a lot easier. So yeah, so I'll seal them up and we'll have the finished product. So there we go. Look at those puppies, ready? To go there's my tip up ones i got some nice probably an eight inch there a nice 10 11 inch there same thing nine ten inch there ready to rock so there you go something something super simple you can do remember dead of winter get out cisco fishing not only is it lots of fun it usually can be some really good action it's good for kids but you also can catch some bait for later in the season because we still have two months left or i have two months left yet so i can fish northern manitoba till april 31st so there's a hot tip for you if your ice fishing ends anywhere there early for you you can still head north all the way to, to manitoba there baker's narrows 
uh, Caribou Lodge there, Caribou Lodge Outfitters, all the way till April 31st. Fishing is just getting started. See you soon, guys. Thanks for watching.